It is also their choice. We must allow them to be able to establish and operate their own laws. So that is that is that is the heart of the message of our advocacy. But also, also we are dedicated, we are dedicated to, to working for the advancement of legal and, pro and political protection of the Russian freedom. freedom. In our in freedom, our freedom to, to, uh, of, of religion, religion that, that we must we do, must it, do it, it in a legal and political manner and, 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 and political protection of the Russian freedom. In our government, Promulgation of laws, laws all those things that we should that always, we always be, be in the lookout, lookout for any political influence that may affect our religious freedom. We should not be quiet when, when we see politicians, politicians come out with certain laws. So remember the one who came recently, what did you call it? What was it the one? Sunday law. Yes. yes, and there was and this, this, this pop here, yeah. Popeye, Popeye as well, in terms of, terms of um, uh, or is it part of it, where it was a relation to a speech, speech whereby, whereby you cannot, you cannot not talk, talk um, um, against, against um, uh, gays and lesbians and, and all those other things on the podium, that, that would be classified as hate speech. speech. Illegal, illegal, and if you are found, found to have uh, committed it, then you are arrested. arrested. Those are some, Those of, are some of them. And, uh, and, uh, political, political motivated motivated legislation nations need to, to, to ensure that ensure political, that political protection, protection of, of freedom of religion, of religion, religion is, 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 alive. is alive. So it's important, so it's important that, that we should be alive, alive by the people around us and intervene where we require. Also to support the broad interpretation of national and international charter that guarantee the protection of this freedom. So, because some of these things may come from other influence external to the country. Overall government were just here in Kenya, but in South Africa we can have it. The whole of South Africa leadership at the national level may come up with some kind of um, um, uh, 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 that we should be able to be able to um, uh, able to, able to pick, up pick up and correct or uh, intervene where, where some interpretation of those, of those laws or those charters, charters um, um, into our freedom. freedom. Do not infringe, do not infringe and, 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 and do not guarantee, 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 the, guarantee the protection, protection of our freedom. freedom. So we need to be vigilant, we need to be, need to be there. there. We are working with in the world and we need to be able to know what is happening around us. Now, now <laughs> here's an yeah, interesting part about, about expectations of us to obey the, the leaders leader of the time. The time. So, so, so it should recognize the legitimate the role of organized government in society. That we expect the to, to, to respect, respect the government. government. So when they come here on the ground, I'm sure it's worth it. Well, Whether it's the DA, DR, NC, EFL, you name it. Name it. Agree? Agree? It's agree? It's agree. Yeah? Yeah. You don't like the other people. There are two yeah. minutes in return. Yeah. 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 Then, then you're not going to respect them when they're 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 when
Important points. Um, it 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 boils down to individuals with that one because when you you have a head, um, there's a, another head. So it it, it boils down to individuals' um, uh, maturity in the in the ministry, in religion, or in your Christ walk uh, that we are able to because how we treat or if we treat people unfairly. It's never biblically based. Nobody, you know, uses to say, I'm treating you like this because the Bible says I must treat you like this. It's, you know, it is made a personal choice of individuals that treat people that way, especially those that might have left and then they come back and then, you know, um, we frown upon. We always suspect when they stand to talk because we think they know, create another confusion. Careful, careful. Yeah. Okay. Another. Yes, my, my, my brother. Yeah, so, so for me, the question on uh, perhaps you know the recognition of political leaders within our space. But I like your preamble as you started there, when you point here, Christ. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm going to read from Luke chapter 23. Mm. The background being that Christ is talking to the governor. Yeah. It is. It is trial. He's speaking to a political leader. He is on trial. Here's something interesting. He says, I'm reading Luke chapter 23, verse 3. And he says, And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Mm. 
You know, I've even read this passage and thought that Jesus spoke in a very cocky way. That's, that's my first impression for reading of the text. But he's speaking to a person who seemingly, from an earthly perspective, is holding the keys whether this guy dies or not. But I like what the commentary here reads and says. And, and I'm, I'm going to quick give a quick uh, comment uh, after, after the, the two passages. It says, there's a time to speak. When Jesus was asked the question, Art thou the Son of God, he knew that to answer in the affirmative would make his death certain. Mm. A denial would leave a stain upon his humanity. There was a time to be silent and a time to speak. He had not spoken until plainly interrogated. I'm going to end there. Mm. It's very important that when we are faced with that delicate interaction with politicians, or with the state or any form of government or anything outside of our organization, mm. we are careful how we approach and speak the truth. Mm. It's important what the previous speakers have said, that we should choose God to obey God rather than man. But even then, even when the choice is clear what we should be doing, it's always wise to defend, rather to be slow to speak. Think carefully about what we are going to say and how we are going to say it. Yeah. Because sometimes, just like what we see here, Jesus interacting and, 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 and way, in the way that he approached, it seemed like a very simple and obvious question. Is it true what they are saying? He could have answered. And, and remember, you know, if you were to speak in the theological sense, this was the king of heaven yeah. being asked by a mere Muslim. Yeah. A lot could have happened in that, in that small interaction. But look at how Jesus interacts. Mm. And, and I think for me, the question is a much broader one. How do we interact when an EFF leader comes and wants to address it? Yeah. What is our approach? Do we even think about them coming here? What, you know, I, I like what my mom was saying in terms of the issue of evangelism. Often our issue is to say they must know what we stand for. Yeah. Not that a, a Julius Maleva must become an atheist. Yeah. That's not our issue. Mm. He must know that we will not go to a rally on Saturday. You yeah. must know. Mm. So sometimes, I don't know, I, I struggle with it, but let's have a mind of Christ mm. that really, really doesn't take things for face value, thinks carefully, and knows when to speak and how to speak. Uh, yeah. Very, very powerful. It reminds me of the three Hebrew boys. Literally, with death. Literally. You had nothing, you have, they had nothing to gain now, you know, in everything. But the way they responded, oh king. Oh respect will be with it. Oh king, we will not bow down. You know. And 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 one would have said we are just they were justified to not respect at that time. They were threatened their lives. Why must I respect this person? Why? They are not treating me fairly. They are infringing on my right to worship my God. And they are threatening now to kill me. It's not just threatening my religion. It, it went beyond just the religion. It went to your life. That they wanted to kill you because you are not obeying their laws that they've put in there. Very interesting and very challenging for us to be able to emulate. Uh, two hands. I, I don't know which came first. Start, start at the back. Also, yes. Um, I want to speak to the question that was raised about recognition and respect for the government. Um, your, your overall presentation showed there's a part that you're going to talk about, participation of the church in government. I think the answer also lies in our participation as a church when it comes to politics. Because the way politics works, the way the world works, mm. you, in this democratic society, I've got to say, in terms of who's going to get into office. So if I, if I take up my duty as a citizen and participate in electing who gets into office, it kind of counters that um, situation. So because I've got a choice as to who to vote into power, and I exercise my right to vote. I can't turn around and complain in a situation where a, the government that's been placed in a democratic society makes laws that's against my belief. 
if you haven't participated. Okay. So your non-participation kind of limits your right to complain. <laughs> they don't go away. Okay. Because you have been given the choice yeah. and you have the right to exercise your powers as a citizen to choose who to face into government. Mm. There are parties right now in, 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 the, in, in our government that they, they don't exactly mirror our members, but they, at least they are close. You know, the ACDP, mm. it's a Christian organization, and for the most part, when they object to certain laws, they speak to what we believe as well. Yeah. You've got a democratic right to go and exercise your vote and place them into office. Okay. But when you choose not to, and then somebody else comes with a different agenda, can't complain. <laughs> I'd like to complain. Sure. Okay, very it's an interesting view. And that's that's one of yes. the recognition aspect. And in terms of respect, it's the same it also comes under the same umbrella. I, it's it's easier to respect um, an office that I have taken part in placing into government. So if if I have the the the, 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 the opportunity to say you're going to be the mayor of a problem. I exercise it. And because I've exercised it, and that person, fortunately, if they come into power, I'm, I'm, it's easy for me to respect them. Because I exercise my right in form of what they stand for, and whether it's in line with my Christian beliefs. So, so if it's not the person that you voted for, it's difficult to respect them? It can be difficult to respect. Just like now, we're facing challenges already with the laws that are coming into place. Mm. Um, okay. The laws are about you must respect the rights of uh, homosexuals. No, we talk about the, the the leader in position. It's difficult because not not the laws it. that they come up with to say uh, you're not gonna. It's gonna be difficult to respect those people just for them holding that office because it doesn't matter what they do. Just for them to be holding that position. Respect even amongst ourselves. Respect is learned from our conduct. Okay. If you're going to conduct yourself in a manner that causes me to lose my respect for you, it's going to be difficult. Because what you stand for and what I stand for are parallel. So it's going to be difficult. But it's demanding of us to respect an office because it's part of living together well, like the civil laws that we've already given, love one another, all those things. So we are going to be compelled to respect. But it's easier to respect when you have taken part in the formation of that government. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to create the dialogue. I'm trying to stimulate the discussion. Um, yes. Um, she raised very, very controversial aspect of things um, that we need to engage at some point. But yeah. Yes. Um, the thanks. I think just building on what she was saying, I think I've always been of the view that it's pointless to, to vote. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I think it, I've always just understood it from Romans 13. And from if you read from verse 1 to verse 6, it actually speaks to submission, submission to governing authorities. So I'm reading from NIV. Which, which verse is that? Romans 13, from okay. verse 1 to verse 6. Okay. So it says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. Yeah. So my thinking has always been God is going to establish us. Either yeah. way, whether I vote, yeah. they are there oh. because God has established. It says the authorities <laughs> that exist have been established by God. Yes. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authorities is rebelling against what God, God is, yes. is, has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Yeah. Right? And then... Um, verse 3 says, For rulers do not care for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Um, do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will not be condemned. Oh, you will, and, you, sorry, and you will be commended. Verse 4 says, For the one who is in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants against agents of wrath to bring punishment to the evildoer. Right? Verse 5 says, therefore, if it is, therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. Mm. Verse 6, 
This is also why you pay taxes for the authority of God's servants who give their full time to governing. Mm. Verse 7 says, Give to everyone uh, what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If they revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the verse is saying God has established them. So whether they are EFF, they are ANC, the fact that they are there, if we still believe God is in control in planet Earth, then we must believe He's allowed them to rule. And if they are doing what is wrong, it's they are God's agents also. Because when they are punishing, whether they are persecuting us, ultimately they are working out God's good work. Because mm. the more they punish us, right, we are believers, the more we pray, mm. the more we minister, the more we reach out. Because we are seeing that they are moving <laughs> against God, so we move. So we see them as God's agents. We don't see them as if they are, they, are, they are, you know, the more they do what is against the Bible, great. Then they are working for our benefit also, because it means heaven must move quickly. Because we're going to spread the word even more. You know, see, in that way we can't be viewing it as if they are, they are enemies. They are placed there by God, they deserve us. They are all, it's all linked. It's, 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 a, it's a system. <laughs> very, very, very interesting discussion. Um, let me quicker. Um, I see now. Uh, I've only done two slides, three slides. It's 50 minutes already. Um, <clears throat> some, some of the aspects that we have discussed, I will be touching on. Um, I will be opening up a discussion as well on certain aspects of what is our expectation in relation to the government of when, you know, she mentioned the point about deciding not to vote. to it to say, but whether I vote or don't vote, God has decided that there will be government, you know. Um, yeah, the same argument he says, whether I evangelize or not, <laughs> okay, yeah, but I'm not there. So, so this uh, this verse sort of is the same as what she has read. Uh, it's in relation to the recognition. This is not about necessarily talking about what they do out of it, but the fact that there is uh, this person is holding this office in government expecting us to respect, to recognize them as a legitimate uh, person holding that position in government. So 1 Peter 2, verse 13 and 7 to 17 says, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to human authority, whether to the empire as a supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing, by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love believers. Fear God. Honor the empire. And that's a basis, a starting point. And obviously, remember now, when we vote someone into position, they are expected, probably we might need to at some point maybe talk about the constitution of South Africa. Um, I have been fortunate enough to have worked in government and they have a, an induction program that it is based on the constitution and you get a different appreciation of how government operates. That Sometimes we think that because we have voted, then that's the end of it. But no, the Constitution expects them that whenever they promulgate or plan, they go back to people and get the inputs. It is not the end when you put an X and then expect things to happen. You must have a contribution, you must be active in your area and voice issues so that they can be addressed. But if you're quiet, sitting in the corner, and says, God knows, then all will be well. You are not doing, you are not following God. We need to be active and participate and challenge. These um, um, counselors do call meetings and talk directly to people. And people will respond. If they are con consent, there are processes that them 
so that they get attention. You know, I will, you know, I'm sure most of you should, we should all have at least a number of your ward councillor in your area so that you have an issue you can quickly <laughs> you can quickly call and it says i have this issue you know so yeah she, i i also have he will send he normally sends whatsapp to update like this week we've been having issues of water kind of things if there's power you also send when there's load shedding you will tell you in this area this is the time your area will be affected on load shedding and then when the load shedding there was a time when the low shading didn't happen and people start complaining and then it happened. <laughs> you know, so people have decided to keep quiet when they don't do the low shading as planned. You know, because sometimes probably they forget. But as well when this says it's supposed to be coming back at this time and it doesn't come back, they, people will be complaining and raising issues and all. And then he will take those issues and report them and then give feedback and says, I've reported this to the Department of Energy and this is the status of it, and they promised to say they will resolve at this time. Or oh, should they are working on it, you know? Like yesterday, you, you were sending updates about the water pressure. It says, no, it's finished, but they are, it's building up pressure now. Around six in the afternoon, you should have water. That kind of interaction with politics that we should be, we should be able to engage and deal with it. Because at the end of the day, you will be affected if they don't do right. They will be frustrated. You can't even come to church now because there's no water. Comfortable to be among people because, you know, all those kinds of issues, you know. So please take note of that. And also, <clears throat> Adventists support the state's right to legislate on secular matters compliant with such laws. <laughs> I know, I know the first thing says, no, but what if, no, this that we, as a, as a church, we support that government has a right to legislate on secular matters. It's their right. And also support that we comply to those laws. That's, that's a starting point of it. The rest of the other noise, yes, you know, that's where now you come in to correct it so that you are able to comply it nicely or, or the type of a thing. But the departing point is that we recognize that they are a legitimate government, first of all. We must recognize that, that they are legitimate. They are there legitimately. Legitimately means according to the laws of the country, they ascended to that position and they did not flout those laws. That's what um, uh, 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 recognize them to be legitimate. And then that when they are in that position, they have the right to promulgate or legislate, create laws for secular matters. And also that we should support those. And it's supported biblically in Romans 13. She touched on it. Romans 13. Biblically, that we should submit ourselves to those laws. Also, now, yes? So just, to, just to make a quick, a quick comment here. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. We just make a quick comment about the church and state. And we, sometimes it's quite interesting to look at the secular church. And one example is Hillsong, one of the churches um, based in Australia, but it's all over the world now. And, you know, um, the CEO or the, the, the top pastor of the church uh, is very well, you know, uh, politically connected. And, you know, and, and he knows the presidents of all the countries. And his, his main aim was to say to the presidents that, uh, listen, our church is about including everyone. Okay. Whether you are gay or lesbian or whatever. Okay. And then, you know, president started to see that this is, okay, well, this is pretty good. And, 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 and as presidents come to power, they say, okay, now we'll be discussing uh, these laws, you know. 
and we were putting them into we be putting them into uh, we we be gazetting them all of those things and bringing them to the fore. What does the public say? What do you think? And people vote on these laws and they say yes, yeah. it's okay. Mm -hmm. They can come to our churches. The abortion laws in America. I think it was a month ago when they were discussing that no, we should have abortion. It should be it should be legal to do everywhere in the world. It should be legal for people to have abortions. Okay. Point here. Now the Adventist Church is very silent on anything on everything. Okay. You know whether it's this issue or that issue or this issue. So I'm thinking to myself, what would happen if we were to expose ourselves at these other mega churches on some some of these issues? You know, and say, no, listen, uh, you know, we don't agree with abortion laws. We think the Bible says this about that. What would be the response from, you know, our political leaders? What would they say? You know, because I mean, the Adventist church is very, oh, okay, whatever, we'll see it. You know, Jesus is coming anyway, you know, um, doesn't really matter. Even if I vote, even if I don't vote on this, it doesn't matter. You know, we predestined anyway to go to heaven, you know what I mean? So I'm saying, what would be? The response, what, what would happen if the Adventist immersed itself into some of these issues? Yeah. Mm. Thank you. And, and here is a, is a reality, Bazalwan. Whether you like it or not, this is the reality. Is that the laws that government legislate and come up with, I'm tempted to say even all, they are not written by them. They are not written by them. They are external forces that write those laws, or at least in a minimum, influence them significantly when they are drafted. Now you ask yourself, who are those people? Who are those people? You know? And, and, and if we are not part of those people, uh, do you think we'll be accommodated anyway? You know? Look, you might think it, look, it is, it is part of the constitution of the country that when government or leadership or yeah, the state develops, they must consult. They must consult the affected stakeholders. In the COVID-19, they will talk about what we have consulted all the stakeholders. And who are those stakeholders? You know? So, and, and that means that only the voice of the stakeholders will get to be at least accommodated in a way or so in it. You know, that's why, in, that's why business make it their, their mind able to be involved, donate to government, says, no, we'll, we'll, we'll build a road for you here. So that when there are certain legislation being created or developed, when they start talking, they know who are these people. And they get listened to and incorporated in whatever laws that happen. Now, if Adventists are not there, that means we are preaching just to ourselves. Yeah. And we'll get to a point whereby even that cannot happen because we are not influenced. We, are, we will end up being confined, constrained by the laws that are created, because we are not able to influence it. We stand on the sideline, allowing everyone to make the noise and jump and contribute. And he says, no, for us, we'll pray about it. You know, the spirit will lead. It, that is true. It's true. But faith without works. It. There must be words, as well. must, must interact. Yes, there is a tepek. It's not a tepek there. Thank you, Dala, for such a thought-provoking discussion. Um, as we are talking, when you are saying uh, businesses or other entities, they invest, they plant into government, such that when it's time for them to reap, government would know that uh, this person has helped us with this. And then I just thought of um, how can Adventists also use the same, the same way, but in a, in, in a way that is within our, within our, our, our principles. 
a few weeks ago about a month ago we were we were discussing about um, how good our Pathfinder adventure uh, 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 curriculum is and that is a curriculum that we could actually utilize to plant into government to say we've got this curriculum that is working very well to raise the child if it's adopted then it's basically going to assist in all these crimes that you see when kids get to 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 to, to teens and then adults or the, your gender-based violence or because of the roads were not well taken care of. So if we use such that such such a system, it will be easy for Adventists to actually say, um, you are you want to you want to pass a law against abortion or against for for abortion and then a law for mm. um, gay relationships and all that. Then the Adventist Church would say, we actually have a structure how to raise a child, how to raise a family. They don't need them to actually listen to them. Okay, these people, they actually know how to raise a child, how to run a family. Let's listen to what they are saying. Then those laws will be there. So it's, it's just a, a thought that came to me. Like, if you invest that way, then we might actually uh, buy an ear uh, in court. Okay. That's all right. Um... <laughs> Uh, it is it is a reality. It is a reality. What is the term? Uh, caucusing. It's a reality. It's a reality that can take you places. If you are able to be influencing a lot, you can gain a lot. So, but if you are a church that decides that no, Bazala. Let's just allow the spirit to lead, you know, and leave it at that. That we hide behind prayer and, and, and spirit to do nothing. You know, we need, we need to start, be in those spaces. Find yourself amongst these people, you know. It is, it is an opportunity to evangelize. There are people who will be shocked, you know, by your, your way of conduct and the way of demeanor in dealing with matters when we are faced with frustrations around you. And, and that in itself, people will have an interest different about you. Then, then the door is open, you know. So, so we, need, we need to go out there. We need to get involved, get involved, make the noise, you'll be frustrated, you will be... I had my own fair share in, in, in government um, it, it became at some point very difficult for me, very difficult, because, you know, um, the environment at the time. <laughs> no, <Yes. laughs> thanks, Dan, thanks, Dan. Um, I think um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch base on the last speaker as well, and when he was uh, the brother was talking about you know the churches and stuff you know the moment you get to that slide I, I was reading it and so you know i think the answer is is perhaps in the slide when we are faced with a situation in which the law of the land conflicts with biblical mandates however we concur with the scripture, scriptural injunction that we ought to obey God rather than men. So, so I think let, let me let me start my 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 engagement or message on that. I, I, I think indeed, if we're going to have the Holy Spirit giving us direction for us alone, then we'll never go. Because we've got a mission of the three angels. And, 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 and before we get to the three angels message, we should not come as aloof. We should understand the, the mitigation or perhaps the issues that people are affected on a daily basis. I mean, if you remember, our, our, the service was saying, you go and preach to somebody that God loves you, but that person is hungry. Then what do you, why don't you start by giving that person food? And then that person now, he's feeling, you know, he's full, he's full and he's happy. And now he will be able to listen. 
to, to our conversation. So, so I think as a church, we, we will need not to be in the fence. We will need to, to perhaps, you know, engage. But very much important as well as a church, when we engage this, we don't have to be more focusing on politics. And because the, 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 the moment what we, once we focus more on politics, we might be judgmental at some point. So I think with us, we should come. I think I like what the, the answer that you were talking about when Jesus, the, the way he answered. You know, we, we, do, we should come with intellectual capacity of perhaps engagement where we, when people are dwelling only on politics, we come and, and we, we show them, you know, something that is higher than politics, which is God. You know, I think if we're doing that, it, 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 we are involved, but we are not involved in dirty politics, if I can put it like that. But we are involved in showing God to say to the people, yes, you know, if we can come back to God, then some of these things. Because the Bible as we can take them to the Ten Commandment. If you go through the Ten Commandment, and we can keep the Ten Commandments, the world won't be what it is today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the hands are growing. That's good. Um. Um, thank you, my brother. Just to touch on um, <clears throat> my brother Felix said in, in terms of <clears throat> our curriculum for the young ones, I and it, by now at least you know the the, the, the country should have should know what's really happening and probably incorporate what we have in schools. And if this, if what we do as at the grassroots or in churches is taken seriously by our leaders. Mm. Because, I can give an example. I took kids to Cape Town, my adventurers and pathfinders. We went to parliament mm. and we were in full uniform. It just so happened, coincidental, it was the death of Mandela. And all the big shots were there. Mm. And the kids were there and they got photographs and whatever. And we gave an overview of what we do, what we stand for, our laws and our pledges and all that. They were so, so amazed and, and, and loved it. But now, to, when you take it forward to say, those who, are, who, have, who have power, who have influence, to go out, stand and do this, it's not done. Mm. I'm just somewhere. So no one will listen to me. You know? So now when we do such things and our leaders don't take up what, what, what the Air Force that you do, it, it had to take us here from Kempton Park to go to Cape Town Parliament when the churches are full in Cape Town in Pathfinders. Pal they didn't even know this, they didn't even mm. see that. Mm. You know? But now when we have we do such efforts and our leaders are so reluctant. And they'll say, no, but if you are going to engage them in these things, they do their meetings on Sabbath, they do their rallies, they do this on Sabbath, this, and then we step back. Then how do we go forward when we do that? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a difficult one, um, but I don't know how we can get to that. But we can, the time when the churches, when, when we were having a problem with the churches who make people drink petrol and eat snakes and grass and all that, there was a council or commission order that was set up. And Adventists, the, the, the Adventists were the top ones to say, your policy, your structures are very good. Mm. If it was only going to be adopted by everybody else, we would have not had this problem of these churches doing mm. what they're doing. Mm. And they are very right. So yeah. what do we do then when it comes to that? Okay, just behind you. <clears throat> okay, thank you. I think, you know what, um, there's, there's so much I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> I want to structure it properly. It's a, it's a very difficult position we find ourselves in as mm. Adventists. Because we are living in a world, we are talking as Adventists and we can agree. Mm. But when we go out there, like you highlighted, when you're in those spaces, not everyone is coming from the same background as you. I've also been in such spaces where it's difficult to even mention God when you're in a meeting where people you know, we've got atheists in here, we've got satanists in here, people who have declared themselves to be satanists. And we've got a constitution which has said 
everybody has the right to practice whatever right. religion, and nobody should be discriminated against for whatever they choose to practice. So voicing out God and Godly principles is a huge challenge to a person who believes in God. Because I can't even start to have an engagement with an atheist about a moral perspective that is based on a biblical belief. Because they don't even believe in God. So, our challenge now is how do we present ourselves in such a way that we occupy spaces and get the necessary attention drawn to what we believe in and influence the course of how laws are made, how decisions are made, how what is considered when considering making those laws. How are we doing that? Mm. So I, I'm taking it as an individual challenge. In your personal space, what are you doing mm. that shows people the light? In your workspace, in your neighborhood, even at the mall, what is it that you're doing that will attract people towards you and give you a clear to what you have to say? Because if I'm a horrible person and I come here, I, I get into a meeting and I start talking about kindness and um, being charitable and all that, but people see me every day, I don't share anything, I'm rude to my subordinates. How, how, what are we doing in our individual spaces in order to make an impact in those spaces? And I want to come back to the contribution my brother was making. Um, when the abortion laws, there was a case that was decided on in the States, which basically said you cannot abort, right? Mm. So in the States, different states promulgate mm. laws differently, whatever. There was a whole outcry about people who were saying, mm. um, no, because God created. And they'll be like, no, but we're not even, how do you know where life starts? Where yeah. do you begin to define yeah. what is a human being, <laughs> what isn't, and all that. So how, how then are you going to echo your small voice? It's just Shungu here in my little corner in South Africa. How do I make myself be heard? Okay. So yes, it starts on an individual level, church level and you know all those um, functions we're talking about we need to find to all the way up to the world church so we need to make a stance if your song can be heard we can also be heard but what is it that will set us apart for us to be given audience mm. if, if, if the leaders at the top are not exactly if they're not conducting their lives in the manner that they want to profess then we're not going to be heard so it still comes back to our personal conducts as Christians Thank you, thank you so much. Um, there is a hand. There's still a hand. Um, yeah, I hope probably we'll touch on some of the comments that have been made in your in your contribution. Um, so, so, but what what is what is important is that we are called to go ye therefore. That's, that, that's our calling. Um, and, and sometimes we get bottled about that teaching. Does it make a difference or does it make a difference? And, and that's the Holy Spirit work to convince and make impact in someone's life. And, and some of the issues that comes with us difficulty in terms of that it becomes very difficult for me to be even say I'm a Christian because of how around me I'm perceived to be, you know, that we are not true to ourselves, we're not true to our characters, then it will a lot of, lot of, lot of challenges. But, but for me, it is, what is important is that we need to be true to ourselves and do our part. Whether there is an impact, whether there is not, has called me to go ye therefore. That's all I've been called to do. When the spirit works, miracles will happen. You can be one person in a thousand, but if you the only person sense, they will all listen. They will all listen. Just yeah. Uh, yeah. Before I continue, let me hear my brother again. I don't know, I'm gonna pick up from where you were because it's almost similar to what I was going to say. 
But, but because I have the mic, I'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Adventist. Eh? <laughs> I, I, think, I think, I think, you, you know, the issue of uh, our interaction in the political sphere uh, as a religious entity has always been something that, you know, ever since uh, Adventist history has always been something that's a problem. But you know, one thing that's important, and I like what my sister there was talking about, being the salt of the earth. You know, something as simple as our dietary lifestyle, mm. you know, where we stand against meat and foods and all these other things. When we, we become truly Adventist, the world will take notice. Mm. And, and, and it can sound like sometimes it's a cliche or whatever it is, but it's important. Now, I'd like to, to go back to the Bible and go back to Jesus. Jesus enters a scene where there is Caiaphas, one of the most corrupt, in fact, the last part of the, of the priesthood was the most corrupt. But what is interesting is that Jesus still honors Caiaphas, the corrupt leader. How does he do that? By sticking to his mandate and mission. Mm. Unfortunately, sometimes as Adventists, you know, my personal position on the issue of politics is that the Seventh-day Adventist church should be apolitical. That's my personal position. And the reason why I think that is because at the end of the day, when we delve into politics, it's very difficult to see who is clean and who is not clean. Mm. That's my personal view. Mm. Now, having said that, I'd like to end with, with giving this point. Second Timothy chapter 2. I've given what, what I was saying in the first point to say Jesus maintained his mission. And regardless of the fact that he was surrounded with so much corrupt people, he still respected them. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 says, Exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving all thanks be made for all men. Verse 2 says, For kings and for all that are in authority. This is the Bible making an exhortation to us that we should be praying for our leaders. Now sometimes, you know, given the kind of discussion we're having there and some of the decisions we see happening, we shun at the idea of praying for our leaders when this is what is happening. But this is what the Bible is according us to. You know, one thing that I like about, about prophets is that it tells us that the rock, you know, after it struck the idol or the, the, the statue, it grew and grew and grew. So at the end of the day, one thing that I like when I look at politics and I look at geopolitics, something which is my space, is that at the end of the day, Jesus is going to rule. Mm. So when we have that in mind, please let us stick to our mandate. Be a true Adventist. And that being a sort of faith, you'll see the kind of influence you have just by opening your lunch team at work. Just by talking about how your children do their things, mm. you'll see the influence that you do in the society you're in. Thank okay. you. Thank you, thank you. Um, maybe just, just to touch a bit on, on your part about your view on being a political. I was just googling quickly the definition of politics. And, and I wanted to, to see into it what is it that is unchristian in it uh, that we should disassociate. It says here, this is now Wikipedia definition. You can decide how you want to see it. It says, it's a set of activities that are, that are associated with making decisions in groups or other forms of power relations among individuals, such as a distribution of resources or state. What is another definition? Yeah, polit politics are the actions of or activities concerned with achieving and using power in a country or society. So that's the definition of politics that I'm able to find here. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not politics, it's people. <laughs> But dealing with people now, we are constrained because people are... There are a lot of people, actually, to your point, there are a lot of people who hate church because of members. Yeah. Yeah. How members dealt with them, how they act. They hate church. Yeah. 
not that the church is the one that is doing all these things. No, the church position is clear, but members are behaving in such a way that it, the church gets hated. We can see it the same as politics. Where's the mic? I must, must now uh, take this mic. <laughs> <laughs> but what I wanted to get to really was to um, to say maybe we must simplify it and, and almost come down to the bottom. When we say uh, politics, and this is what is politics, let's, let's simplify it in our involvement. Yeah. What do we mean by involvement in politics? Because what you are referring to, and I think what we've been discussing around us getting involved in the, re in the, 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 the discussions around the, the acts and the various legislation that is developed, I think that I believe that one is quite clear in terms of us having a voice and reaching out and talking to people and making God's word known to everybody. But when we are saying me getting involved in politics, I mean, what does that mean? More in a simplified way, so that we're not walking, maybe trying to see it out of assumptions. <laughs> so now we're going to now be there, and there's like there, doing our thing, doing, you know, what does it mean, mm. you know? Um, what, yeah, what does it mean? Yeah. We've got somebody who's an advocate currently, who's a president, you know? How? What did it take him to get there? The others might want to assume at some point he had to be corrupt. Maybe he didn't have to. He was just honestly being a true Adventist. They saw the value of the Christian nature in him and appointed him as, but what does it mean? So that we are not talking from a fearful standpoint. <laughs> no, it's evil. <laughs> Maybe it's not, you know, but what is it? What yeah. is it? Because we might just be saying evil. We might not have. What is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's a fair question. But what, what is not, you know, when you take a public office as an Adventist, does not mean, therefore, that that office becomes a church. <laughs> you know, let's pray. Um, this person is not performing. They are not delivering. Let's pray for them. They are not doing their work. Let's pray for them. That what is not Adventist or well, Christian in general is that it is expected of you that how you conduct your business is not questionable. That's that's that in the dealings that you have, I'm, I have been fortunate that I have not find myself even in a disciplinary hearing, in everywhere, even in government, one would expect that I might have found myself. I've never been in those kinds of situations, you know, because I have, my conscience does not allow me, does not allow me. There were people in government, well, when I was a king in government, approaching me, no, come, we're going to give you a ticket to come, sit there and all those things. Fortunately, the people who were telling me, says, oh, when I, I, I tell them, says, hey, these guys are putting me for this. says, no, just run away. Because what happens is that um, they will give you this ticket, you will go, and they will take pictures with you in there. <laughs> now, when it comes to um, tenders, that picture is going to be used for you. Whether it was honest or dishonest, it's immaterial. The picture cannot talk. It's there to say, look, they gave this person the tender because look, he bought them. They bought him. And it, very, it becomes very difficult to say, how do you operate? Because in reality, when you go to private sector, private sector, they do those things. They take you out and, and to create relationships partners and all those things, you know. But, you know, most of the time when it's in government, it becomes very difficult for that act to be honest. You know, so I, I tried myself to stay away with things that I'm not coming and, and, and go away. And maybe, yeah, I, I said I will, I will find other time to talk my experience in there. You know, there, there was a time I got a call from the office, the, the Lutuli house, doing my job and someone was not doing their job 
and they go and report me somewhere else. I get a call. And I said, but I'm just doing my job. No, listen, comrade. <laughs> you know, yeah. But that's the reality. And, and those are some of the reasons why I felt very uncomfortable. Because some of the things is not how the system is in government, you becomes the problem. You know, when people submit their invoices, you do your part. But because they submitted to you to process it and it gets stuck somewhere, then they ask you, we have not been paid. You're giving you says, but it's still being processed. To find out that process that is happening, it's not really happening the way it's supposed to happen. There are other decisions that are being made. Now it becomes a problem whereby when you leave them waiting for you outside. Especially they said in December. They will come to you and say, my children need Christmas clothes. We need this man. You know. I'm fine, unfortunately. I have not done anything wrong, but unfortunately someone is suffering somewhere. Yes. You are talking. Yes. Who, who's the other one? Talk, 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 Josh. All right, okay, thank you. Uh... Let's, let me just read this text from the book of Isaiah uh, 56, uh, verse 10. And it says, His watchmen are blind. They are all arrogant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Mm. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. <laughs> okay, so my first question is, is this not the Adventist church book? Yeah. Did I, did I just say that? <laughs> sorry, excuse me. Well, uh, sorry. I'm just, I'm just kidding. But here's, 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 here's uh, what I really want to say. Uh, in 2016, there was a lesson entitled uh, Seven School Lesson, which, which read The Church Militant. The Church Militant. And, uh, and it simply said, what is, what, what is, what is a militant? It is, it's taken from the word military, which simply means to be a moving force. Right to be rebels with the cause. Mm. All right. So, uh, and, and and we know that a, 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 a soldiers need to fulfill the mission. That is that's how we describe a soldier: the person who has a mission and who is able to fulfill that mission. Now, there are soldiers in the Adventist Church who are in these spaces and uh, who are in these influential spaces. Now, my question is uh, to you or to anyone here. How then do we get these people's attention, you know, so that they can influence and push the Adventist agenda wherever they are? You know, I could name drop so many people right now that we know, and that probably people know here, who are in these spaces of influence. But why are they so silent? Why are they not saying anything? You know, and, 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 and I would think my answer would be that I think here at the church, you know, it's very, as I said at the beginning, oh, it's very okay, you know, it's sort of a, we relax, we relax, we read the Bible, we, have, we listen to sermons, we sing songs, and we go home, it's okay, it's not a problem, you know, so what I'm trying to say is that there are people out there who are in these spaces who can push the Adventist agenda, but they're not being given a, a, a chance, and why is that, oh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know someone just to try and touch on your question. Um, it is unfortunate situation. Uh, and 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 that brings the perception about people not liking to do business with Adventists. That, that, is, that is a, let me put it like that, you know, that Adventists do not like to deal business with other Adventists. Okay, this situation is that um, what he did, he was working for a company and being an Adventist, really caring about people and he was in HR. He was able to get jobs and get Adventists to be hired and work there. It was all 
and, and, and all those kinds of things. Now, <clears throat> the situation happened that one of those people that he brought in to work there was found to be having some relationship. This person is married, having some relationship at work. Now, it didn't sit well with him because he, knew, he knows the, the partner and he had to intervene to that. So when he intervened, the, the couple had a problem and then this person that was hired was found to be having relationship. Went to management and says, this person here yeah, is hiring people from his church. And he was actually even, you know, not doing any, well, depending on how you want to interpret it. He used, you know Adventist, so you, you know people that you are bringing in, that they are doing their job. It's not like they don't deserve to be in those positions that he is able to help them get in there, you know. But because he was an honest person that could not tolerate misbehavior, he found himself to have um, been doing things in an unfair ways. So now it's seen as unfair labor practice that you are just pulled from your church. You know. And, and some of them, they're not directly from other churches, but Adventists. But it's seen as your church, you know, uh, that type of a thing. And, and, and that type of a situation sort of makes what, uh, Adventists uncomfortable to bring other Adventists in. Because, you know, one will be the fact that uh, this person will be sort of a, a, a watchdog checking how you behave and do things. Um, if you will be dealt with in that kind of a situation where you are, unf you are not free in that workspace, you know, and, and the other part of it is that um, you, you are expecting that the person that you brought in will be honest and not behave in a way that may bring disrepute to the church itself. Because unfortunately, what you do, maybe it's another discussion you can have. Interaction in business, if you are doing business in a corrupt manner, the church can deal with you, you know. It, it does not sit out there because we are a, you bring, you know, a disrepute to the church. But, but those are some of the challenges that certain people okay. end up not being active Adventists in, in their spaces. Yes. Yeah, th th thanks, Mdala. <laughs> you know, the, this point that we are talking about, I'm just thinking because at this stage, um, um, it's something that I'm grappling with because I'm a chairperson of a union. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, before you throw stones, hear me out. <laughs> so, so basically, I, I think I did share with the elders and other people that we talk, how did I come to get into this? Uh, yeah, it's quite a challenge. So, I'm, a chair, I'm not going to mention the institution and, 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 so I'm a, I'm a national chairperson, I've got about 50 shop stewards, so I'm going to pinpoint or help grasp with other points that have been alluded already. Um, first of all, uh, as a chairperson, there's one thing that I've won, is that when we start a meeting, we must pray. It, it took longer for me to do that, but again, I could see some of the people, I've got even guys from Cape Town who are Muslims, and at some point they were not happy, but I'm glad that whatever that is happening, it was happening in terms of uh, digital. So we haven't sit in a room, because whatever that we have started, started in 2020. So, so but you, you hear now, I'm, I'm praying, and one of them has a right to say we can pray in Muslim. And, and, and that, that, you know, in that space, you, you, I don't know where you understand where I'm coming from, but I think let me leave that one. And, and come back to what I'm grappling with at the present moment. 
What, what, what I'm grappling at the present moment is that as a chairperson, there are people who are coming to me and say, look, chair, no man, the management wants to speak with us. And uh, because you are very strong and you, you, you are cultured, you are honest and stuff. And, and they want you to be in their pocket. And there's a moment whereby we need to fly to Cape Town to meet with the CEO. And I'm saying, no, I don't have a mandate from the CEO. I've got a mandate from the constitution, uh, I mean constituents. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say as an Adventist, you, you, you're grappling with so many things here yeah, because at some point, once you delve deeper in, into this uh, union and politics, you end up losing your, your, your Christ-like uh, uh, you know, character because at some point you want to be loved by everyone. But I, I thank God because I, I always want to, to pray before I go to a meeting and ask for the Holy Spirit to, keep, to guide me and, and stuff. I'm, I'm just talking about my life, you know, so that maybe some, some, some members of the church can understand the, the, the challenges and, 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 and difficulties of being there. The last one now is, in the unions there's something called BECs, and when the BECs were, 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 were attended on Sabbath, so from the onset, I, I, I did put my position that I won't be available for that, you know? However, there are people that say, look, for you to be one day president of SASPO, I mean a financial institution, for you to be a president of SASPO, you need to be a chairperson of a BEC. One, that means I'm not interested to be a president of SASPO as a Christian. Uh, and moreover, as a seven, as, as an Adventist. Two now, the chair, my chairperson at the present moment wants to be a president. Yo, I know that guy. That he loves, uh, he loves money. <laughs> you know, even in the BEC, there's some money that are not accounted for. <laughs> so now, must I vote for this guy to be a president? <laughs> I don't know if you are together here. And I'm grappling with that. I think I did share with the elder and other elders to so say, hey, I'm feeling that I, I need to, to, to release this because for me, it's really testing my, 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 my Christianity and the values that I, 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 I invested. Because the moment, the reason that I became a chairperson was, I don't want to talk about myself, so sorry, that the reason I get into this was that I wanted to make a change in the institution because I saw that the workers are working hard, but they don't get what they deserve, which is a Christ-like thing. Am I correct? Yeah. And I, I think I've achieved that. But now when it comes now to being a higher echelon and becomes a president of South Africa, some people see that in me, but me, I don't want it because I'm going to be far from Christ. And that is a fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so I don't know if you can see the, 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 the mitigating and the aggregating yeah. factors. That the I mean, yeah, the, that I mean in. Yeah. And I think the challenge is that I want to go to heaven and, and <laughs> continuing to be in this might affect me on my route to heaven. I thank you. <laughs> very, very, very reality. And by the way, I was, I was once a shop steward myself. <laughs> it was still early stages of my career. You know. And I was still young and, you know, energetic. And I was giving challenges to management, asking difficult questions. And then me not really thinking much about it. The next thing they made is a what are we going to do? Uh, there's a vacant position. I want you to act as a manager. And then when I act as a manager, then they come and say, but you cannot be in management and also in, in the union part. So you must choose. <laughs> let me leave it there. Let me leave it there. Uh, let, me, let me just finish. I think this is one, this is the last slide, uh, so that we finish this part. See what I said at the beginning, that I had to divide this presentation, because if we went through it, uh, 
well, we are, where are we now? You know, seven out of 18 slides, you know. So, so yeah. Here, we are, it's, it's, it, I know our discussion might have slightly, but we are still in the discussion of the freedom of, of conscience, of freedom of religion. It is, is, is in that context to say, within the political space, how is our uh, freedom impacted by government and the politicians around us. And this time now we're looking at whereby our freedom of religion is limited or can be curtailed. I touched on it earlier. There are situations whereby that freedom can be constrained, freedom of religion. Now, the first part is that uh, as the church, we, uh, we understand that this freedom uh, uh, there, there are some it's not an absolute freedom in terms of freedom of religion. It is absolute. It doesn't tremble on everything else. And that because is that freedom of religion can only exist in the context of protection of the legitimate and equal right of others in society. Meaning that when society has a compelling interest such as protection of its citizens from imminent harm. We have just gone through it. that kind of a, a, an exposure that our gathering as per our freedom of religion poses a risk to the greater society. Therefore, that uh, freedom of religion to be able to gather, to be able to worship together is curtailed. So it can therefore be legitimately curtailed um, uh, to practice it. Those, those, are, those are the ground. But such curtailment should not be taken in a manner that limits the religious practice as little as possible and still protect those endangered by it. So, so how it, it, it can be limited is that it's not a complete limitation to it, that you cannot be able to practice your freedom of religion. You know, that's why we were able to still proceed continuing to worship online, you know, in a way. And uh, some might be visiting each other. And, and it was not an absolute barring to practice that freedom of religion, that we are not suppressed now to, to be able to um, uh, practice our religion. Now, <clears throat> the other situation, of freedom of conscience in order to protect society from offense or similar intangible harms. So there might be a situation where government comes and tell us about some kind of a harm that is not tangible. And, and we can't really understand it. Uh, such as hypothetical dangers, they may come to say they might be this or that or to impose social or religious conformity by measures, Sunday laws, and other state-mandated religious observations. So they may come and legislate certain uh, legislation that will force us to abandon completely our religion and, and do something else. It talks about the Sunday law. So these kinds of um, curtailment, they are not the limit, limitation of freedom. So, so, so th those are, are situations where the, the government is able to curtail and limit that freedom. Now, as Christian, how do we deal then with kind, these kinds of situations when, when they happen? I think we touched on some of those issues um, in, earlier on. Is that Seventh-day Adventists are called to stand for the liberty of conscience for all. We must be able to protect everybody's freedom. Um, of choice. And in keeping with our love for others, we must be ready to work on behalf of groups whose freedom of conscience is impinged by the state. It is our responsibility that we must act and participate or in protecting others oppressed by the state inappropriately. And, and, and this is, um, and this is uh, biblical as well. So such work may result in personal and corporate law. Sometimes you might 
lose something by participating in a situation where you are acting on behalf of groups whose freedom of conscience is inappropriately impinged by the state. Three, um, 17 to 18, so, for it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. You know, evil can also be categorized as when you see wrong happening, you do nothing. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, alive in the spirit. If we are following Christ, Christ died on behalf of fighting for our, our righteousness. Because of sin, that we are suppressed by sin, and he died on our behalf so that we can be freed from it. And we are expected to also step in to help those that are not able to help themselves. So this is the price we must pay in order to follow our Savior, who consistently spoke for the disfavored and dispossessed. You know, those that are the widows, the, the hungry, the sick, they were very close to him. Proverbs 3, 8 to 9, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves and show justice for those being, yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. Let me, let me just finish this last part. Last text is that learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of orphans, fight for the rights of widows and workers. <laughs> Where's the mic? Yes. Part one is done, Bazalot. Uh, so we can discuss whatever I want to, da to discuss. Part one is done. I said part two is participation in government. Uh, we'll do it some other time. Ah, yes. Thanks, Dad. Please go back to the, your last slide. Um, the content of the slide is very simple. Uh, if we are looking at it at face value. <laughs> like speak for those who cannot speak for themselves, uh, defend widows, defend orphans, defend the poor, defend the hungry, defend those incarcerated, defend those, yeah, all those subgroups. But then, um, what if the current government is uh, kind of like um, stamping on the rights of groups that we do not share the same uh, views with. Do you also come in and, and protect them? Because tomorrow it might be. <laughs> if the government can do that to those other groups, tomorrow they might also come in on to you. So do we, are you also, does this golden rule, because I think it's called the golden rule, do unto others that you want it done to you? Should we also exercise it in protecting those that we do not share the same views with? Okay. I think my question was going to be around not so much religion, but those who are oppressed. Take, for, for instance, the LGBTQ. I community. Yes. I hope I said all the alphabets. But they call them alphabet community. Yes. So you are done when you didn't okay. you're done. <laughs> so, so in that context then, somebody yes. is in that community, right? And they are fighting for their freedom of conscience. Yeah. Right? I come in right as an Adventist and I'm supposed to help them as well in their fight for their freedom. I think Sister Haukola spoke to this earlier on to say the, the prodigal son chose to leave and we must be okay and be mature with his decision to leave. So are we, are we going to be supporting him and packing his legs also and say, yeah, you know, how do we step in where, where my support of that may be in contradiction to the word of God? 
do I, how do we measure them? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, time, time, time is, is an enemy. Um, and very, very key questions are being put. And uh, they, yeah, give him the, they give him the answer. The, the IT people now. It's in my, I've, I've exhausted my time. Yeah. Yes, um, yes, yes, my brother. Yeah, so, so mine, I'm not sure if it will suffice as, a, as the most appropriate answer to the question. You see, the question is, is, is difficult. Okay, that's one thing that I acknowledge. Because here's, here's where we should understand the context of this slide. Mm. The context of this slide, when I read it, is speaking about liberty of conscience, right? Yeah. So in other words, you have someone who holds a certain belief system, and they subscribe to it, and in terms of what their conscience tells them is the right thing to do, that is what they are doing. Okay? In other words, they are, they are ascribing to the belief system that is there. Now, the verses that have been put there, uh, particularly Proverbs 31 verse 8, now speaks for those who cannot speak for themselves. Let, let me start with that. Now, the, the alphabet community, I think, constitutionally and from a discrimination perspective, they might find it offensive to call them the alphabet community. But <laughs> the LGBTQI community, I, I believe, is not short of voices. That's the first thing. That, that's my view. It's not short of voices. It's a very strong movement currently, and one that is making a lot of noise in a lot of places. And the Roe versus Wade matter that was highlighted earlier uh, on, among other issues of many other movements that are happening there, just adds to the volume of the power that that community has. I think one of the sitting senators right now in the US happens to be a member of the LGBTQ community, which shows the acceptance of that community in that sphere or in that, in that space. Now, we must be very careful when we are dealing with such matters. And why I say we must be very careful is because, for me, if we stand on our mandate, which is to teach and to preach the word of God, even if, and I'm going to be practical, let's suppose, and I, and I happen in my own space to have a, a boss who is of that community. If, for instance, in a practical sense, he is asking for guidance or wants some assistance in some form or another, there is nothing that prevents me from helping him. Mm. That does not mean that I support his lifestyle. That does not mean that in terms of what I understand on marriage, I subscribe to what he does. Mm. Because you'd find here John chapter 8 verse 11. Now Jesus is faced with a woman. You know the particular story. Mm. Now this woman had accused us about what she was doing. Mm. Now these people were very right in what they were doing. That was what the law was requiring. This, man was, was, this woman was supposed to be, to be stoned. That is what legislatively was supposed to happen. But look at the mercy that Jesus Christ comes and does. Him coming to the aid of this woman for her not to be stoned is not Jesus saying that it's okay for adultery. No. He's saying, go and sin no more. If, if you read it further, further down, verse 11, that neither do I call them be, go and sin no more. So it's very important sometimes to then be very careful and, and then now align ourselves to certain causes in the guise of saying that we want to make sure that we are standing up for those that are being put down. How do we do it? Are we able to point out sin to say, my brother, you know what, as much as your lifestyle is like this, uh, this is what we're asking. But in terms of needing food, needing shelter and all those things, we should be able to do that. I don't think there's any problem. But... When we do that, what are we actually then saying thereafter? Jesus goes and says, go and sin no more. In other words, he was able to be very articulate and careful and direct. He called sin what it was. So let's be careful when we go and, and, and put a particular message or we support. Let's support in a humanitarian, humanitarian basis, but at the same time, we must stand for the truth of what we believe in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I think it's a very important point yeah. that you've raised, and, and, and it's very critical because we end up losing the plot because of what we uh, perceive the person we are helping. In this case, you know um, that that other community is that our our call, our call uh, here. The primary call is 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 for the weak, for those that cannot do for themselves. 
I think that's the primary call. That those that are unfairly treated and there is nothing that they are able to do to fight for themselves and, and help and, and fight for them. But also, um, I will also assume or expect that we are also expected to participate in a situation whereby governments are starting to discriminate in a manner that may implicate or affect us somewhere in the future. You know, see, the, the, remember this issue of freedom of speech. Freedom of speech was not really directed um, to, to, to the churches per se, but it was more directed in the treatment of that group. That group feels that uh, or the way they are categorized should be regulated because it sort of, you know, remember there was one court of Joshua Moponga that was taken for calling them dogs and all those kinds of things. And they feel offended because that's what some in the Bible will, will classify some of their behaviors in, in such a manner. And because they are influential, they are everywhere. They, they are able to start creating or modifying or influencing certain laws that eventually will start to affect us at the end of the day. That we should not be quiet. We should, we should also be active in ensuring that it, it is not about supporting uh, that, but it's about ensuring that there is fairness in treating everyone. That is the whole point, to make sure that there is fairness, people are treated fairly, they are ensuring that they are right and not impringe upon. Remember one of them, our, our Adventist um, a core message is that we also respect those who decide not to, to be part of, of the relig our religion. And we, we should respect that and recognize such. That just because someone is not amongst us, then we should not fight for them or should, even if they are against us, you know. So it is, obviously, it is, it, is, it is something that is not easy to do. It is a very you can easily be accused of changing and supporting things that you once spoke against. It, it, it will happen. But for us, it is not about, um, perception will always be there. Um, someone told me that politics is about managing perceptions. You know, it is not about reality. It is it's about perception that people have. It, it can be far from reality. Because there's a perception about this person that's about politics, you know. But, but, but I'm not there. I'm not there. So, so I, think, I think in a nutshell, um, today, what we touch on, there's an opportunity. Even today, it was not my day, really. I was asked to just fill in um, on this topic. So whenever there's an opportunity in some other um, uh, departmental days, I will probably come with the rest of the other parts at some point. But today, I think the key takeaways is to understand that we have a freedom of religion. We have a freedom of choice. And that freedom of choice, needs, we need to make sure that we participate to ensure that government do not end up infringing on it and also protect those that are not able to protect themselves when this right is being infringed upon them, because it will eventually come to us. And the fact that we, we need to respect those public bearers, that we recognize them as a legitimate um, uh, leaders in, in, in society, and that they have the power to legislate secular matters. And we have a role to play in the, you know, I like the discussion we had today. I hope we were more to have more views on the issue of how do we get involved exactly? How do we, in that space, you know, um, of influencing all these laws? And one thing I can tell you again is that, you know, it's a reality that um, 
if you want your 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 principles, if I may call it like that, in recognize and influence you to get involved in that space where these things get recognized. They won't just be very classy, just, you know, recognize. If you are just sitting in the corner, you're not saying about it, you're not doing anything about it. That we need to start getting involved, you know. I think we should all know our white counselors. Whether it's a DA, EFF, whoever, at the end of the day is your leader and you need to respect them. And they are there to serve you. That's important part. Whether you, you voted for them or not, you know, my sister has left. She raised the point about difficulty in respecting someone uh, that was not the one that you voted for. Yeah. It, it, it could be a personal issue about that person per se. But for me, the principle of the matter is that it, it does not matter. Jabu is saying, God has already established this government. So my wife also said that at some point, that it's, God has already says, he, he puts government, he removes governments. So what's the point of voting? You know, that type of a thing. Yeah, I don't want to take it to the extreme. Of, of, of the matter. But what, what you are calling is to be active citizens within our space so that we'll be able to influence the spaces we find and change society. And we can achieve more when we are able to influence and change society. You know. So that was freedom of choice, freedom of conscience that we touch on today. That was part one. Um, to understand, I remember I said I have five parts yeah. so you can imagine you can call it a series we can have a series discussing these matters yeah so thank you so much for your participation I really appreciate it uh, for those that uh, will be watching this online um, unfortunately whatever questions that you might have you might not be able to ask but hopefully next time we'll have an opportunity to engage. Um, if needs be, I can, we can redo it. If needs be, to have a bigger capacity, to have more engagement. Or we can proceed um, to deal with other aspects. All this aspect, obviously, there is a relationship between them. They are connected to each other. They are not in isolation. So um, we can have more discussion on it and... Um, even revisit what we have discussed today and get more contribution to it. But it, it was important that we start from that basis of understanding our freedom of conscience. Amen. Amen. I think we're going to close now. Um, yeah, two hours was I was talking. <sighs> it's not right. It's not right. Um, maybe let's call the kids and and then we'll close, um, go home. Amen.